Hello, and what today I want to talk about is a uh, lunar eclipse, primarily a partial one, which is going to happen Monday, June 4th, 2012, as well as the uh, Venus transit, uh, which is going to happen in the United States on the 5th, uh, Asia on the 6th of 2012, um, where Venus is going to try to eclipse the sun, um, failing miserably. But anyway, back to the partial eclipse. Um, the, way, the reason we don't get an eclipse every time we have a new moon or a full moon is because if the moon's axis is tilted at about 5 degrees to ours. Um, there's a place that's called the node, um, that node right there. Um, the moon moves around us in a counterclockwise direction, so it kind of goes this way where it's on the near side. And this one over here where it's on the far side. Um, when it hits this node going down, we call this the descending node, and it hits that far side going up, it's the ascending node. Um, basically, the, the whole orbit is right here. I tilted it to see it sort of the way it is this way, so it's moving in a counterclockwise direction this way. And the node would actually be um, right here. So that flip the diagram, this node right there would be the descending, this one would be the ascending because it's moving from above the ecliptic, the sun-moon earth line, excuse me, the sun-earth line. Um, and here it's actually going uh, um, up above, so that's the ascending node would be right there. Okay, um, in terms of the geometry, we actually, to get a lunar eclipse, we have to get the sun, we have to get the earth, we have to get the moon. And it's got to be sun, earth, moon alignment, not the sun, moon, earth, because that way we get a, a solar eclipse. To get a total solar eclipse, the moon has to move fully into the earth umbra. This is the darkest part of the shadow. Um, no light gets in this section at all, um, or over here, and we get partial light. In fact, actually, if the moon were right there, um, it would get almost 100% light, and above that line it would be 100%. In other words, it can see this entire sun. Um, this bottom part can see almost the entire sun. It can't see this bottom section, so it is pretty well lit. This one would be not as lit. And so the moon's moving across this direction in its orbit. Um, as it moves into the umbra, we get a total. Um, what we're going to get this time is going to be a partial, and I'll explain these down here. Okay, this is actually... Um, a solar eclipse where the sun is way over this direction. Um, sunlight, sunlit part of the moon toward the sun, dark part, new moon toward the earth. Um, the moon's umbra, if you live in there, you get the total eclipse. If you live out here, the partial, again, because some sunlight gets in there. This is an annual eclipse, which we had on May 20th of this year. Um, not visible um, in the eastern part of the United States, but uh, in Asia. Um, here we have the same sort of things, um, partial eclipse, where we get the this case it's a solar eclipse where the moon's penumbra touches the earth. Um, we get an annual eclipse when the moon's actually a little farther. Um, I made a video of that a little earlier. Um, we had a supermoon uh, about a month ago. Um, we're going to actually, so then we had a minuscule um, new moon, super full moon, minuscule new moon, elliptical orbit, far, uh, really close on this side, farther, really almost as far as we can get on this side. Wasn't quite capable of covering the entire sun, um, and it actually, uh, that would be the place of totality, and you can see we're a little bit past that. This is the total eclipse, it's inside there, and your eclipse if it gets too low. Okay, what I want to do now is I want to show you um, another website, so I'm going to try to pause this. Oh, so this website is called, uh, sh what's it called? It's right out the image. Um, shadowandsubstance.com. Um, I'll see that when we get back to the PowerPoint. And if you take a look at that, this is the Earth's umbra, and part of the moon will move into the umbra. Most of it stays in the penumbra, so this is called a partial eclipse. This will happen on June 4th, 2019. Um, you're going to see it starts at around 4.48 Eastern Standard Time. Um, all the times are listed here. There's Central, Mountain, Pacific, and uh, I guess Hawaii. Um, but the moon will move through, and right at 11.04 Universal Time, 7.04 p.m., um, it'll actually be at the greatest uh, eclipsing, but it will never get um, as dark as it can. And I'll start one more. Enters the penumbra, fully into the penumbra enters part of the umbra, gets as far as it's going to get, maximum, 
then it exits the umbra, starts exiting the penumbra, and then by the time it actually gets to that point, um, the eclipse is over. Okay, back to the show. Okay, here's the site that I was going to show you, shadowandsubstance.com. You can go there and watch that video. If you actually go to this one, which takes a little bit of typing, it actually is the full page of this. But I like the, the rest of the show, and I'll show you a couple more things. The next thing that's going to happen um, on the 5th is we're going to get a transit of Venus. Um, Venus has um, a, a orbit that actually is tilted to ours too. Um, it's about 3 degrees. Um, so what that means is every 8 years as the Earth goes around the Sun, excuse me, every 5 years the Earth goes around the Sun, Venus goes around 8 times. Um, and when we are actually in perfect alignment, where um, if you can imagine Venus gets a little higher, Venus gets a little lower. Um, and I think I actually have that down here. Let me just take a peek. Um, so you can see it's tilted a little bit. So right here, if Venus and Earth are in this same line, we get this transit, uh, which basically means an eclipse of the sun. Um, or if it's on that side, we can get it. And we did get one of these back on June 8th. 2004, and we're going to get this one June 5th, uh, 2012. The next one I think is going to be in December, so I really would like you to watch this one. Um, it's actually going to be, I think, on December 11th, 2117. It's 115 years in the future. Um, I'm old enough where I'm not going to make that. In fact, I think almost anybody alive to see this one right here is probably not going to be alive to see this one right here. But it will move across, it'll enter going this direction, so it is on the descending node. Um, it'll actually cross that. It's not as perfect because we would really want it to come across from the east um, and actually go to the west, um, but we will get to see these things. These are probably hour markers, so we're going to get to see this thing for quite a, quite a while. Um, problem is, for us in the east coast, um, before it gets to the center section, the sun is going to go below the horizon, so we're only going to see about the first third of it. I'll show you a map that gets to see all of it. I'll show you a website that can calculate when you're going to see it. But if I go back down, um, that node picture goes like this. So 3.4 degrees relative to Earth's orbit. The only time we can get this transit is if it's in this area right here, and the chance of the Earth, which moves slower, Venus moving faster, um, being at that same location at the same time, um, doesn't happen very often. Um, it's over 100 years. Here's the vi world visibility for the transit of Venus. Um, if you actually live inside of this mark right here, you get to see the entire thing. If you live on this side where I live right about here, um, we get to see it as the sun is setting. And if you live over in this area, you get to see it as the sun rises. And if you live in this area, um, you, the sun's going to be below the horizon during the whole transit. So you can see there are um, basically five different areas. It's when it first touches the sun, and when it's fully in the sun is number two. Um, maximum would be number three, and then when it comes over and touches the far side, that's three or four, and then if it goes out, that's five. Um, talks about some other things um, which goes on. The next set I'm going to show you is actually, um, actually I'm going to show you that sun, the, uh, what's the name of the site, Shadow Substance before I show you this site, but I'm going to show you this site too, so I'm going to pause it again. Okay, here's the Shadow Substance, and I actually moved it so we can see the site. Um, I'm going to scroll down a little bit here. This is the actual transit. And again, they show Eastern Daylight Savings Time, Central Daylight Savings Time, Mountain, and Pacific. Um, it's going to start right around uh, 6 o'clock here for us in D.C. Um, 1 o'clock in the morning, it's at its greatest, and it's going to end at around 5 o'clock um, a.m. But starting right around 7.35ish or so, the sun goes down. So if you get a really good view of the of the horizon, you can see it up to that point. I'll probably watch it till about 8 o'clock. Um, but that's the end, first animation. Second one I sh want to show you is this one. <coughs> um, this one's senano.com and then Venus Transit. And what you can do, um, I'm going to move this all the way back. Um, you can pick your location, and what you want to do there is you want to just actually move this. Um, this orbit 
because of the orbit of the Earth, the spin of the Earth, um, it is going to enter there. It's going to go in a, let me close this, it's going to go in a straight line, but because we are moving around um, in our orbit, it, the physics of it is going to make it look like it curves and to show you some really wild things. If you take this pin and you move it around, you can actually make it do some really wildly wicked you can see that spin and it moves in different locations. If you're in the southern hemisphere it looks like it's actually going to enter the bottom of the sun. Um, there's about the best graphic in terms of uh, going straight across but you can see that's not going to be in the visible section. So let me move it back to where we are. Uh, 3877 right about there. Um, you can take pictures of this as it moves through. Um, you can see where it's actually going to be for first contact. It's going to be at 6.04 local time because these are all in local times. Um, right now we're at 11.30. Um, this is 11.30 a.m. the day um, June 5th. Um, we are now two days, 21 hours, 23 minutes and 52 seconds away from this. Let me push play and you're going to see Venus pop out over here. And it should be popping out right about now. And it moves up pretty fast. And then it's going to move off this page. And it's going to come down here, um, pop out here a little before this. And you can see we're at 4, 5. And if I can stop it right as it touches. Um, right around 804 it does and you can see where it's lit up right there it does contact the sun and right about there um, it's fully inside this black line is going to mark where my sun is going to go below my horizon so I get to see all of this um, but right at there sunset 8 o'clock 9 o'clock 10 o'clock, whoops, that's 8 o'clock, there's 11 o'clock, I don't know what I'm doing, and there's 12 midnight, local time, um, you can't see it, and eventually we'll go over here, and if you, you can slide these faster, and you can see Venus will be long gone by the time the sun comes up, and it'll be like it didn't happen. Um, anywhere through here, if you want, you can snap a picture. and it actually opens up and says what do you want to call it I don't want to save this picture you can go also go in and turn on the music kind of amazing um, I think that's all I want to show so I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna stop and thank you